R has over uh, many other analysis packages is it does great visualizations. So as you know, if you've messed around with Power BI, people just seem to register with visualizations of their data much more than just a spreadsheet or something. And um, while open source R is, is really, really a, a, a product that's been around and a lot of people have done a lot of work with it, it does have some limitations. Um, so, and this is pretty common with open source um, platforms. You see that in Hadoop too, that there are people who develop their own versions of it, you know, that they want to charge people money for, and with Linux, Red Hat does the same thing, to add features that, that don't, aren't included in open source, but they include the open source functionality as well. Well, there was a company doing that called Revolution Analytics. And they have developed a version, a, a version of R which um, was faster than the Fortran version because they rewrote a lot of the functions in, in C so that they would execute a lot faster. And they also created multi-threaded versions of it. So their version was a quite a bit faster. Um, in April of 2015, Microsoft bought R. And it was a real big push to get R included into SQL Server 2016, but they did it. So they have incorporated um, R into a number of products. So not only is R incorporated into um, SQL Server 2016, but it's also embedded in uh, Power BI as well. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. So when you talk about R, what are you talking about? Well. A lot of different things. You, uh, open source R is the academic free version. Um, it is the most common one that people use. Uh, the common user interface for this is RStudio, which is an open source free version of the GUI that runs the open source R product. And you can, if you like RStudio and have been using RStudio, you can use the Microsoft R open library again, free, open source, to also um, run your R code. And for people who've been using R for a while, they might want to do that because why would you want to, because Microsoft R Open includes the improved memory and multi-threading capabilities that Revolution Analytics created. So um, one thing that, that was one of the great strengths of R is that it allows to, you to process data very quickly because it loads all the data in memory. That can also be a drawback because, you know, back in 1996, people weren't, you know, accumulating as much data as they are now. Well, it's relatively easy to come up with a data set that will completely crash your memory, available memory. So what um, Microsoft Open did too is they created a, a multi-threaded version which works that way for many of their libraries so it's just inherently faster and Microsoft R Open is um, another competitor in the space again they're trying to go after an op the open source product now um, Microsoft R client is one step away, one further step away from open source R because it contains the revolution analytics proprietary functions that they created to improve what R can do. R is designed to, like I said before, to run in memory. And if you have, if you run out of memory, well, then it'll blow up. What our client does is it allows, um, Microsoft, it allows people to use the Revolution Analytics components to use some of these scale R algorithms. And what scale R algorithms allow you to do is swap things in and out of memory. Um, the next step up from that is R server. Now, I, I know you're saying, well, you said everything was free. Well, R server is not free, is it? Well, kind of, because R server comes free with SQL Server 2016. The SQL Server 2016 developer version is free, therefore our server is free. Um, but if you want to use it you, um, in a commercial environment, yes, you do need to buy the um, SQL Server um, 2016, but you do not have to buy the Enterprise Edition to get our server, which is really kind of nice. One of the few things they did not only include in Enterprise. So we've got these different versions of R and there's different places where you can run it as well. So let me go ahead and show you how people tend to run R. So this is RStudio. This is the standard um, development environment that people do to use to create R code. And R is a little bit different 
um, because what R does is um, it runs things one line at a time. You can see up the top here um, that it has some libraries and inst some installed packages. So let's go, and what it does is it runs things line by line. So let's start running things line by line. So if I do that and click here and just click on run, and you'll see that these are all the installed packages that I have. And if I want to install another, another package that's not here, I need to go ahead and install it. By just, um, and, that's, and when I install it, what it does is it goes out to the web, goes to the CRAN R, MCRAN R libraries and downloads the package that I might want to have. Um, the most common one for graphic visualizations is ggplot2. The difference between ggplot2 and ggplot is they did actually recompile this in C, which they are doing in a lot of the different libraries to improve performance. So if you see people using, um, this has got to be the most common library that's used in R because it's used for visualizations. So if I want to look to, if I want to go ahead and use a library, I can just run it, I can just reference it here. And then if I want to get help on it, I can go ahead and run this. And over here, I've got a little tab that, get, that tells me, that, that gives me contextual help for it. So I can see all my help right here for the various objects and, and what I can, and, um, and for what I'm trying to do. So if I want to install something, and, um, and if it's not there already, I can just go ahead and run this, and it'll go tell me that it's going to go ahead and install it. Now, one of the things that, um, that R comes with is it comes with a lot of packages already built and sample data already built into it. Um, this particular code sample is available at CRANR. I wanted to provide something that you would be able to um, get a hold of. So I can go ahead and, and you know run this and you can see what I've got here and I can load my data sets that come with this package. And this is, these are all of the data sets that are embedded within this library and it tells me where my library is. This is the path where it is installed. And these are all the built-in data sets that I have available to play with. So I could, you know, make that, if I wanted to use one of these data sets, diamonds, why not, it's a girl's best friend after all, I can go ahead and run this and I've just loaded it. So if I load it and then I can go ahead and list it, I can see that these are my columns of the information that I've loaded. So this is what you would do with R. R is taking files and loading it up into memory so that you can go ahead and take a look at it from within R versus doing SQL Server. Now a lot of people say, well, that's, you know, it's nice you can do all this stuff with R, but I, I'm really good at SQL and I can do this kind of stuff in SQL too. That's true. And there are a lot of things that you can do that, that R does that are very similar to what you can do in SQL. You know, you can do various min, max sorts of things and sort and look at data and, and this is all very SQL-like, but it can do a lot more. Um, if I want to go ahead and look at all the data within here, I can see these are what my values are as representative samples. This is kind of like a select statement. And if I want to just print a few rows, and this is basically selecting just a couple of, you know, couple of top rows, top rows being head here. And if I want to look at the last couple rows, I can go ahead and do that too. So again, it, this is just getting to be a lot like SQL. You know, I can kind of find, look at the look at the various things in the object because I've loaded all this data up, and this data is loaded in what's called a data frame. And a data frame looks a lot like a table because that's what it is, but let's you look at the dimensions of that frame. And you can see that there are, um, these are the number of records and these are the number of columns. So this is where it gets, if I can just go ahead and do some plotting here and I'll run this so you can see what the strengths of R are. I can go ahead and run this. If I go and plot, so you can see that I have gone ahead and, and plotted my data here. So just you know, a plot of what, how all my data is looked by pricing carrot, just really simple, really easy in R with a couple of functions with ggplot. And what this did is it took the sample here and did a log, logarithmic scale using blue. So that's pretty simple kind of you know elementary getting started with R sort of stuff. But this is just R Studio, so. This is not necessarily something that if you were in a SQL Server environment you would necessarily be familiar with.
So let's go look at how I would recommend that you would do it, not in our studio, although it's a good tool. I like um, Visual Studio better. And the reason that I like Visual Studio better than our studio, uh, one word, IntelliSense. Um, it notice that they have this set up to look just like our studio. And the reason that it looks like this is because in um, our tools here, um, in data science settings, it will tell me that it wants it to put things in the data scientist profile. If you are going to go back, back and forth from SSIS, you will want to change this back because this looks really stupid if you're using SSIS. But this is the uh, this is the um, R profile that's automatically created. Now, getting this, get, getting it's very important when you're using R to make sure that you are using the right libraries because the libraries will, will dictate what you can and can't do. So that is. Um, I have the list of everything that you need to download on my um, blog post where I've got intro to R, but you will download R tools. And if you look at the options under R tools in advance, you'll see what R engine that you have installed. Now, if you have recently installed SQL Server 2016 and you want to use the Microsoft um, R client functions, it's not enough. Unfortunately, you also need to install the client tools because right after SQL Server was released, they came out with another version. So the version that ships with SQL Server needs to be upgraded in order to work, and you will get an error. And I have a post about this if you want to. If, if you run into an error when you're trying to run R functions, realize that you're missing an install that you need also the R client install. Um, one of the things to get this install, here's a little trick that you might not know about, is I'm using, this is Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition. Um, you have to have a 64-bit OS to be able to download our tools. It doesn't work if you have 32-bit. Sorry about that, but that's just the way of it. But when you, when you, um, when you, down, when you um, download the, the tools for our server, you need to log in to the ID that you created when you um, installed Visual Studio. If, like me, you're like, I'm not going to create an install for Visual Studio. What the heck should I do that for? The website doesn't work. That's why. And I was really baffled by this because I thought that, you know, other people can download. And Because I had somebody from Microsoft tell me, well, it downloads just fine. must be you. So I figured out that was the issue, that I didn't log in to SQL Server actually the individual studio which is one of the things that it asks for when you create it so this um, provides the environment and I've um, and I've loaded the uh, our server libraries here and this is the 8.004 version and I know that just because it blew up so let's take a look at the code that I have in SQL Server, so why you would want to do this. Now some of the really cool things that um, Revolution Analytics added into it is the ability to set compute context. What the heck does that mean? Well that means that I have the ability to run on my local machine and use up my memory, or conversely, if I want to and I have the rights, um, I can run on the server's memory and use up their memory because the server has more than I do. So beware, DBAs out there, if you are setting up servers so that people can use our tools on them, they, uh, your developers can run you out of memory. Um, it is running the same. If, if I, when I change this compute context to run on the server, now in my case, I'm running everything on my laptop. But if I'm um, putting, pushing my compute context to um, the server and the server is a dev box, I could totally steal all the memory on it. Um, I not going into the whole like memory require, requirements that you get into it with this because it's kind of involved, but keep that in mind um, because you this is a new environment for DBAs when they are looking at how much memory things are taking, um, and there is not a lot of very good documentation about this yet because you know it's not been out very long, so the implications for R stealing all the memory from your SQL Server box aren't very well defined, but I imagine that that is something that is going to be uh, written about more and more as people start crashing servers because they run out of memory. So 
what I'm doing here is I'm running, these are the commands that I'm using that are part of the R client. So I can choose to run locally, which I'm going to do, and I want to use the um, components that allow me to do that. You'll notice that I've got some things that, that start with Rx, kind of like a prescription. Well, the prescription is Revo Analytics. All of their functions start with Rx. And so if it starts with Rx, you know that it is not open source version of R, it's the Revolution Analytics version of R. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting the compute context to local so that I can run on my local machine, and I'm telling it how I want to connect to it. What's my SQL Server connection string? Now, yes, I was lazy, and I did put a, a, a um, human readable password in here. You do not have to do that, but if I, um, I wanted to be able to show you how you could do it. So what this does is this is loading up a sample table from SQL Server. This is the name of my server and database instance and user ID and password. So let's take a look at that real quick. So I'm going to go look at SQL Server. So you'll see this is the name of my server, which is a funky name for my desktop. And if you look for the sample table, which is airline demo small, that's what this is. So we can just do a real quick look at it and just see that it's got um, arrival information for the airlines. So I'm able to connect to that um, and load that into memory. So one of the things that people are generally doing with R is they take a flat file and they load that flat file into memory and they do what they do with it and then they're done. And the big problem that when I've been talking to clients about this is that Everybody uses their own little file, and there is no one file to rule them all. Pardon the Lord of the Rings reference there. And so that people think they're using the same CSV file, but they're not. And so if you can use a database instead for your source data, then people can do analytics on the same stuff. So this is where we get involved with accessing SQL with R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I want to read in this is a this is a chunking mechanism so that I'm going to read in um, 5,000 rows per second and R has a pretty funky uh, equal sign it's a little pointer you can use equal signs but um, the standard R does use a pointer and this is why I am using Visual Studio instead of um, R, um, instead of R Studio, because look, I've got my fun and wonderful IntelliSense that tells me exactly what I've got going on here. So I'm I'm putting all of my SQL data into a array, basically a matrix of SQL, which is which has got the table information in it, and it's going to tell me to get the information and create a histogram. So let's go ahead and run this and just take a look at it. And this, this little icon here does. And you'll see that I'm running it here. It's reading in all my data. And it's giving me some information here about the mean, the standard deviation, the min, the max. That's what this is. This is my little summary. And I'm also getting it some counts and a little histogram for all the data that I have. So it's a really cool way of doing some analysis. And, and this is the kind of thing that I think you want to on SQL Server, because if you just want to see where all of your data is falling, you want to get the min, the max, and standard deviation, this is a really quick and easy way to get all that information and analyze your table very quickly. So we'll get into looking at the stuff when we run the context for the SQL Server here in the next demo. So that's a little bit about using Visual Studio and R. All right, back to slides here for a second. All right. So, so what are the strengths of R? Why would you want to play around with it? Why would you want to use it? Well, it's, you can do really good rapid analysis. You just saw what we did there. We just took a quick look at a SQL table and did some and did some quick graphing on it. We also did the same thing with a built-in data set in R Studio. Um, it's weakly typed. Well, that's a kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Um, it's very, very forgiving, but if it's not terribly efficient. Um, one of the things that it does not do well, you can't loop in it. It doesn't loop very well at all. Does that remind anybody of anything? It's kind of just like cursors. Cursors don't, don't work very well, and, well, looping doesn't work very well in R. But the, one of the big strengths for it 
is a large number of pre-built code libraries. So there's so many things that have already been built for it that you can just go ahead and pass to it that it really legs up on doing an, your analysis work. All right, our weaknesses. You're limited by available memory. Well, that can be a problem, especially if you've got four gig of RAM or you have a lot of data. Uh, it just has not been designed to do anything with that. And it was developed by statisticians, not developers. So there are some design things that they did not take into consideration when they built it, which is why people are going through and rewriting a lot of their code and putting a two after the library so that it will be more efficient. Um, the other thing about it is inherently single-threaded, which it seems crazy in today's world that anything would be single-threaded, but R is. But Microsoft fixed uh, most of those major weaknesses when they put R in SQL Server. So they rewrote some of the major components, um, especially for uh, Intel processors and the math libraries to statistically just improve the performance by 38% just with the math algorithms alone. And the most important thing that they did is got rid of this silly, you can, um, if you, you'll run out of memory, if you run out of, you know, running out of memory problem when you're analyzing lots of data. Because let's face it, Everybody else has been figuring out for years how to swap things to disk. Why shouldn't R do it too? And it can. And the other thing that they added, which is a really kind of a neat thing, the other item that I didn't get into with Visual Studio, but you can do um, debugging and stop and step through and look at your variables. All pretty much standard stuff that if you've been doing any development anywhere, you're used to doing. You can't do it in RStudio. You can in Visual Studio, which is why I picked that one over RStudio. So how does Microsoft do swap things in and, in and out of memory? Well, I um, stole the picture there for any of you uh, old movie fans. This is from uh, Gagunis, and this character's name is Chunk. And Chunk is a standard methodology which is used for in, in all sorts of programming languages, which means that you load what you can in a memory, and then when you run out of memory, you put it to disk, and at the end, you put everything together. That's how it works. Pretty simple stuff. Um, and that's what um, SQL Server R does, and that's why uh, Microsoft's version is better than open source because you uh, almost have unlimited amounts of data that you can analyze without worrying about um, blowing things up. So how do you get this all to work? Well, you have to install it naturally, right? If you just have um, SQL Server installed, hopefully you installed um, our services and database, and if you didn't, you can go back and do that. Um, again, this is this picture was from it's from RC3, but it did not change from GA. I, um, I, I did look at it after that, although I had it installed already, so I didn't do it again. Um, what you need to do look at is the R services in database. You have to have you have to install that. If you didn't install, or if it's been so long since you installed that you can't remember what the heck you did. This is what you need to do. If you look at your services, um, what you want to do is look for the one called Launchpad. I don't know why they called it Launchpad. Launchpad makes no sense to me, but hey, that's what it's called. So if you don't know if you've got um, our, the our services running, go look for your service. Look, go look in services for SQL Server Launchpad to see if it's running. And if it is running, cool, then you've got it installed. But wait, there's more because you're not done yet. You also have to configure SQL Server. So once you've got it installed, great, now you have to configure it. So you configure it just like you do with a lot of uh, SQL components with the SP configure command. And what you need to do is you need to configure external scripts enabled, one, reconfigure go. After that, you will need to restart SQL Server services. It will not work until you do that. Now you may or may not need to um, add the role um, DBRRE role uh, member username if you don't have rights. If you give given yourself, if you're working on Dev and you've given yourself, you know, DBA, DBO rights, it's not a problem. But you may need to grant that access to people that don't have rights. So let's take a look at actual the SQL Server part of this. Oops. So. Looking at SQL Server, so how, so what do we do to look at what's installed here? All right, so let me, if you 
I believe I've got. This is the um, configure scripts enabled, um, which you have to run if, in order to get R to work. I've already run this, so this won't do any good. Um, you will have to restart after you run this command. Um, if you want to look at this blog post I have, you can copy all this stuff out of there right now. Don't have to wait. And if you want to know whether or not you've done this right, what you want to do is you want to run an actual store procedure that actually looks, it runs some R. Now granted, I'm not doing a whole lot of very fancy R at this point, but I could. Um, what this is doing is this is create, is executing um, external script. So this is what allows you to run R. Um, I have heard that there are other languages that they're looking at, such as Python, but right now it's R. And you are running, you are telling it that you're going to have an output data set and that it's equal to your input data set. And this is your, my input data set. And it's basically check to see if it's working. So if I go ahead and run this, and notice I'm in master because it doesn't really matter because this is, this is a system parameter. It will tell me if R is working. Now, if R is not working, I won't get a one. I, will, um, I won't get anything. I'll get no data whatsoever. So this is an easy, simple check to actually run some real R code and uh, see if your R is set up correctly. All right, so let's look. So we've seen how we can run a, a stored proc. It's a very simple one in R. Let's go back to look at the at the code and look at running things in the in the server context. So I looked at the same code that we looked at there a little bit ago, and notice all this was running locally. So I'm not um, accessing my memory on my server at all. But I can all I can change my compute I can change my compute context here. I can change um, what I can do is I can change it to in a SQL Server. So if I do this, I'm changing my context to run in on the server rather than in my local environment. So if I only have four gig of RAM and the server's got you know 128, I could run all of my R on the server and it would look like I'm running it from my from my desktop. Just kind of a funky thing to do. So what I can do for that is I'm going to go ahead and set my compute con. I'm going to um, run this code here to set up my compute contacts. And this just basically set my variables, set SQL wait equals true, um, set my shared directories um, that I that I need for my chunking. This is where it's going to be putting data in and out if um, it needs to take things in and out of memory. And um, it, this is going to set the um, compute context into in SQL Server here. Now, this would be on the server if this is the shared directory on your server. Um, since thing locally, it wouldn't be locally. But this is you would need in this case to run this. You would also need some kind of writes on the server to be able to execute this. So if I go ahead and run my compute context, I'm changing it from local to the server. So I'm now not running anything. So I can you can see where I'm running it, running it here, and it tells me that I'm that I'm now in my in database object. So you can see what your context generally is. So I can do some little exploratory data analysis here, and again, this isn't going to be a whole lot different than what it than it was before. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a little. Uh, What's it telling me? Uh, execution halted. Well, it's because I did a summary. Hold on, let me run all these together. Huh? I don't know what I did wrong there. Well, shucks. I must have modified my cube when I was playing with this. I'll have to get up a fix to that so that I, my code will work. But what this is now doing, though, this is now running in the server context versus on my local machine and I changed that to running here. And like I showed before, you can also create a little stored proc and run any R code you want to from within here. And some of it can be quite extensive. It doesn't have to be some little stuff like I have here. All right. So 
Um, one thing that, that R is not limited to, R is not limited to strictly running in SQL Server. It is now set up to run in R as well. As of last week, they just modified it again to improve the capabilities of Power BI with R. Previously, if you wanted to interact with the visualizations, you could do that in desktop but not in client, which is kind of bad because then all of your visualizations look like pictures. Now there still is some limitations to the number of visual libraries that Power BI can support. Um, all the lattice ones though are fully supported. Um, some of your more obscure ones though will show up as um, bitmaps rather than interactive visualizations. Um, there is also a 1500 data point limit. Um, that should be something that's relatively easy to get around because a lot of times you really don't want to show that much data. It tends to just confuse people. But you can include any visualization that you can create in R. But you have five minutes to render it. And if it doesn't render within five minutes, it will just die. Now, I know that might seem kind of weird, but there's a lot of things that people are used to running in R and going away and waiting three hours for them to come back. So the fact that in Power BI you only have five minutes to be able to um, get your data back has proven to be a bit of a limitation for some people. Um, you can, there's two, two methods for calling um, Power BI and R. You can um, write your R within Power BI or you can call it. All right, so for, in a summary, there's a lot of different flavors of R. Um, there's, there's R open, there's Microsoft Open, there's our client, there's our server, all these different ways of doing, um, of doing R. I will also say that Microsoft is rather inconsistent in some of these things. I didn't bring this up earlier because I forgot, but I, it, the version of R in um, Azure ML is not Microsoft R open. It is open source R, although they promise that they will get that fixed sometime soon. So if you are writing R code in Azure ML, it's going to be open source R, not Microsoft R open. Um, but Microsoft has resolved a lot of the weaknesses that R inherently has through its purchase of Revolution Analytics, who recompiled it and allows it to use memory and chunking. Um, R can be used in SQL Server and Power BI, and you can use it in a local context as well as a, a server context in the same in the same on the same box. And I wanted to leave a lots of time for questions because there's, a, there's so much to cover with R and it's really difficult to figure out where in an hour that you're going to be able to stop talking about it. <laughs> I will say that I'm also doing a pre-con in SQL Saturday in Minnesota if you want to have a full day of R. Awesome, and we do have a lot of questions. So I'm glad that you have some time left for the Q&A. Do you want me to uh, start sure. sharing the questions with you? All right. Cool. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for the presentation. It was super useful. Uh, we do have a lot of questions. So I'll quickly go through them. Uh, so the first question from Kenny is, can I restrict memory? Um, yes, you can, but not, it's, yes, in answer to it, yes, you can, but it's um, not that obvious. You do not see that I am restrict, that, that R is what is running. So you restrict it for more than just R when you do it. I don't remember off the top of my head it shows up as, but you can't tell by if somebody didn't tell you, you'd have no clue that they were running that that while well, that memory hog was R. Cool, awesome. Um, so the second question is: R server included in SQL 2016 standard edition? Yes, believe it or not. All right, cool. And then third question. Can I just use Visual Studio without having the SQL engine installed if I don't have the 2016 server? This is by Vincent. Yeah, you don't you don't need to have SQL Server 2016 at all. All you need to do is download um, the community edition of Visual Studio on 2015, which is the only it works with. You do not have to use uh, Microsoft R Open. Um, you can use open source R if you wish. You do not have to use R client either. So you have your choice of whichever library that you wish to use within Visual Studio. You just have to make sure that under that you have installed the R tools 
And I do have a link for that on my website for all the tools that you need to download um, Visual Studio. And just make sure that the version in um, our tools under options is pointing to the ver SQL, excuse me, the R library that you wish to use. Because you will be installing multiple libraries and so you want to check to make sure that you're pointing to the one that you intended. Cool. And for people uh, who uh, don't know how to uh, chat, just on the right side, there's a chat box. So if you want to put your question in the chat box, I'll just ask. And if you don't get to it, then we'll uh, figure out a way. Uh, to oh, yeah, I'd love to do a, a follow-up follow -up blog post for this, too. So, so there you go. Uh, so if the question is not picked up in this session, we'll definitely uh, pass the questions to Ginger, and then we'll get a blog post out of that. Perfect. Uh, sure. So the next question, can you write back the results? Uh, I think there's a question is this can you write back with the results? This is bad. Can I write back the results? As in what? Can I write I them guess. back to where? If I was I creating this for... Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I think the person and there's other questions similar where people are asking, can I put the output of the R code that comes out and do back to the SQL? So I guess the question ties to some of the other questions that are in a yes. similar theme. Yes. Absolutely. So if you create um, if you create an R stored proc and the R stored proc contains output, you, you that's like standard output that you would have in any stored procedure. So you can write that to a to a uh, table if you want to. Um, it also, believe it or not, you can actually run um, create visualizations uh, while running code in um, SQL Server. You won't see them because there's no environment for it, but you will generate them. Cool. Awesome. Um, and uh, feel free to follow up in the questions in case uh, you're looking for something different, uh, but we'll move on. So next question by Andres, uh, can R for SQL Server work with cloud computing? You mean, does it, so does it work in like in SQL Azure? Is that what you're asking? Because I, not to my knowledge, I know that they plan on putting it in Azure SQL, but to my knowledge, it is not there. Hmm. Uh, it's not specified in the question, but I'm assuming it they meant as your ML point. Yeah. Uh, so the next question is if you install R server, will a second R server be installed if you change the installation later? This is by George. So this is sort of an interesting question. Because if you are running developer edition and you want to inst um, and you haven't selected the um, R server option in SQL Server. If you want to create to install another R server, you can't on the developer edition. It won't let you. Um, for the SQL Server edition, it will. Now, why would you want to install an R server? Well, one of the things that R server does, um, independent of Microsoft, is it allows the same chunking capability to occur on any ODBC connected data source. So you might wish to create an R server to connect to your Hadoop cluster. And um, you, your R server would handle the requests back and forth from Hadoop um, that you, and you would write R code to access it. So there's definitely a reason that you would, might wish to create another server or another several um, R servers because you have different sources that you want to connect to and you want to separate them. So yes, you can, and there are some reasons you definitely want to do it too. Because our server is wider than SQL Server. Okay. Cool, awesome. Um, so the next question is, is this our server CRAN or MSOR? I guess you covered it a little bit, but I guess the person might have asked it before you covered it. Is it, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so the question was, also, uh, is R server CRAN or MSOR? I guess they're referring to the packages. So it, yeah, so if you're, it is fully CRAN supported. So all of your CRAN objects can run in R. In addition to running any and all of the um, open source components, because it's, it's CRAN certified, it can also run the revolution analytics um, functions that allow for chunking and swapping things in and out of memory and scaling to other data sets and creating ODBC connections to other sources. So yes, plus more. Cool. 
Um, so next question, does R for SQL Server work with analysis services? Um, is it part of analysis services as in can you embed it within analysis services? No. Uh, it's really designed to be called as part of a stored procedure. Um, that is how you can run it from within SQL Server. So, I mean, you can't embed our code in a view, for example. Okay. Great. Although, um, yeah, I think that answers it. Yeah, awesome. Um, so the next question, can 32-bit Visual Studio use all the memory on Windows, or is this like Office? Um, well, you cannot... Uh, you cannot install our tools on 32-bit version of uh, at 32-bit OS. So you can, if you do not have a 64-bit OS, you cannot install the R tools for Visual Studio. If you have a 32-bit OS, you are going to be using R Studio to write R with. You don't have an option to use Visual Studio. Okay, great. Um, so the next question is: uh, Is the Visual Data Point limit? Is in the is it in the freebie version or Office 365 and edition? That question is specifically related to Power BI, and here's a little tip for you with Power BI. It's sort of related to Office 365, but not exactly. Um, you, it, I'm, I am referring to the pro version because I, um, the free version of Power BI is not does I do not believe supports R. Um, what you get if you get, this is like diverging off the topic, but if you have Office 365, you get the grouping capabilities. And if you don't have Office 365 and have Pro, you don't. But you, the feature list within Power BI is the same other than, you know, grouping and some security things and OneDrive. So it's sort of, and I hope this sort of answers the question. Okay. Okay. Um. So the next question is, can the presenter recommend some books or tutorials to get started in R? This is by Don. Yes. Um, oh, there is, um, Buck Woody recently um, put out a list of really good books that I like. I can't remember the name of the one that I have been using. Uh, I believe it's called like R Stats. One of the things about R is, uh, I, I can tell you what I don't recommend. There is a class on John Hopkins um, for their data science stuff that does R. I do not recommend doing that. I know a number of people who've done it, including myself, and the reason that I don't like it is because it doesn't contain anything about visualizations, which is what I think R is all about. Um, on my website, I've got a, a link to a application called Swirl. And Swirl is an interactive tutorial for learning R. And I think it is really good. It's um, S W I R L. And if you go look on my um, blog page for Intro to R or R, you'll find the uh, download for that. And I do find found that to be quite helpful. Um, there's also a class on edX, which you can audit for free. Um, it's part of the Microsoft Data Science class, and I thought that was a you know reasonably good starter class as well. Okay, awesome. Um, let's see, so the next question is, can you please elaborate on calling R from Power BI? This is from Ryan. Okay, so you can actually write Power BI code from, excuse me, you can actually write R from within Power BI and tell it to create a visualization and that visualization will appear. Um, you can use using the data that's loaded from within Power BI. You can do that. You can also create a data set from your R code and load that data set into Power BI. So if, if the output of your R analysis is a data set, you can load that into Power BI and use that as a source as well. Okay, great. Um, so the next question is, do you have an example of visualization execution of R in Power BI? This is by Penny. 
Um, I don't have one right now. I know that if you go to, I believe that SQL Dusty's got one. He did one a little while ago. So if you go to SQLDusty.com and look up Power BI and R, he's got one. I need to put one up. But that's where you can go find one. Okay, awesome. Um, and one of our presentations, I think a couple of months back, was regarding R and Power BI. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you can find that uh, webinar and that goes deeper into some of the R and Power BI stuff that we talked about. Uh, all right, so next question. Uh, could you let us know how to present the histogram information analytics to end users or business users? Well, I think histogram information is is very useful to business users because they get counts and, and, and graphs and things. But if I'm doing analysis myself and I need to know how many values are null, I find it really valuable. So I think it's kind of a universal um, construct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Um, and so other questions is from Kevin. Does SQL Server R provide ways to tune R code uh, for performance with R interaction and SQL Server. Um, I think. So let me, the question is, let me reframe the question. I guess the person is asking for, can you do some performance tuning with R code that's on SQL Server? So um, what I would recommend if you're running R code on SQL Server is that you write it somewhere else. And when you are done with it and you like the way that it works, then you cut and paste it into SQL Server because it doesn't contain any of the um, assistance, help, or functionality that's included in R, in R Studio or um, Visual Studio 2015. So if th there is very little tuning involved other than, you know, if it's accessing certain tables, you know, it, you know, putting indexes on them like you would with any other standard stored proc. If it's, you know, you know how it's under the under doing the underlying query, but to actually tune the R code, don't write it in SQL Server. Write it in your in your GUI for R. Awesome. Um, so the next question: After the result set is rendered, how long does it persist in memory before being flushed? I'm not sure. That's a good question. I do not know the answer for that. Okay, great. Um, next question. I will have to find out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, so the next question is, I know my company is going to install SQL Server 2016. How will I find if it has R or not? Um, you, if if they, you have the ability to look at the, and I know it's like it's somebody's server, like they're really going to let you look at the services that are running, but that's really how you can tell if they've installed it. If you can, if you can look at the services, um, and and see that see that the R service is running, um, you could also try configuring it. And if it blows up and tells you that you can't, um, that's also kind of a giveaway. Uh, looking at the services though is really the best the best way of going. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um... So the next question, at SQL Pass last year, we were told that custom libraries could not be installed on SQL 16R. Has that changed? Um, you can install some of them. Okay. You put kind of, you backdoor into it though. So you're not installing them on the SQL Server, you're installing them on the machine and then they're callable by SQL Server. So it's kind of a dodge. Because technically they're right, but you install it on the machine and it has access to it. So, yeah, awesome, great. Um, so the next question: Will SQL Server 2016 support other languages such as Python using the SP execute external script command? So, I don't work for Microsoft, and <laughs> I don't they don't I don't know everything that they're doing, but I did hear a rumor that they plan on, on supporting Python. But it's a rumor, and I do not know if it's true, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, so Davide asks, if you install a package with execution context set to SQL Server, will the package be installed on the server or locally? The context has to do with where it's, what memory space it's running. 
So if you are can if you create a connection to a server, it doesn't really matter where you have it installed. If if it is has access to a server context, that is where it is going to be accessing memory. Okay. Um, so other question is running R script and database in Visual Studio using scale R is only limited to the functions in scale R. Uh, the question then goes on to say, but using T-SQL store procedure to run R scripts in database is applied to all available R packages. Does that? Well, I, well, you don't. You're not limited to only running scale R. You can write standard R as well. So you want to write scale R packages if you want to. Now, okay, this is a little caveat here. While it is possible to use scale R if you want to run things in and out of memory, you don't have to. So if you want to, if you have R code that's written in open source R and you don't use any of the scale R functions, you can run that code and, and throw in a bunch of data through it and as soon as it's out of memory it'll blow up. So yes you can do that, nothing's stopping you. Which means that as a DBA, you're going to kind of want to take a look, know a little bit about R. If the only thing you know is, is that if it's got arcs in front of it, it's going to be using the scale R functions. You might want to know at least that much of it because if they don't didn't write it that way, if it runs out, it will use all the memory that's available until it blows up. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so I know we are almost the time limit. Ginger, do you want me to ask you a few more questions or do you want me to hold it up to the blog post? Why don't you give me all the questions and I will answer all of them and so that we have the answers for all of them because I don't I know people's time is valuable and some people probably have to go right now. Okay, sounds great. So what I'll do is for the remaining questions, I'll just uh, note them down and the, pass it to you. Yes, send me the whole list and then I'll have them, uh, then people can have an entire list in, in one place, including that one that I know the answer to and I will find it. Okay. And someone is making sure that they have your blog URL. Can you just share that just one more time for all the That's viewers? right on the screen. It's www.desertislesql.com. Okay, awesome. Uh, and so any parting words for the audience? I really think that now that, that R has gotten to be such a, such a popular language that as data professionals, we are the ones who can really analyze the data well. And this is another tool in our tool set. And I really strongly encourage everybody to you know, take some time and, and start learning it. It's really kind of fun. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so thanks everyone for attending the session. Thank you, Ginger, for an amazing session. I know a lot of people wanted to learn more about SQL Server and how it integrates with R, and I think this session did a great job of giving them the overview that they needed. So thanks again for your time, and uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining the session. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.